I want to share five tips to kind of master and get the most out of the Kaleidoscape platform. Kaleidoscape is my favorite source in our home theater. We use it for all of our high fidelity critical movie watching. And if you've been in the platform for a little while, maybe these tips will help you. Or particularly if you're new to the platform, keep these things in mind as you're starting to get, uh, as you're starting to use your Kaleidoscape, get familiar with it. And again, kind of master it and get the most, <clears throat> and take the most advantage of everything that it offers. So tip number one, there's two settings on the device that I recommend changing out of the box. The Kaleidoscape UI is gonna to wanna to do its kind of automatic movie wall shuffle type feature. And while I think that's neat, it's whiz bang, it's cool for showing stuff off. I think, uh, I, I know I myself and I've, I've talked with and I know a lot of other users as well, uh, don't actually keep our Ks in that mode. Generally speaking, folks usually do prefer the alphabetical movie list ordering and there is a player option to be able to go in and change the default behavior of the movie wall from shuffle mode to alphabetized mode. The other one has to do with subtitles and I think one of the awesome features of the platform is how is the ability of the Kaleidoscape to make sure to put subtitles of your content into the movie space rather than into the black bars down below it and there are options in the subtitle area of the player to ensure that this happens. This is particularly valuable. Of course, if you have a scope uh, projection screen in your home theater and you're zooming up images to fill the screen, you don't want subtitles showing up in the black space below the actual picture image. And even if you have a Mad VR or a Lumigen or something to deal with that, you're still much better off always having the subtitles in the image space. And again, K gives us this reliably. I think it's a great feature and it kind of shows off just how good of a home theater integrated device the Kaleidoscape is. Tip number two, make sure you're using the web and the mobile app uh, elements of the platform. Of course, you can do a lot of things on the movie player, the movie wall, the player, the Strato UI itself. You can trigger downloads there, you can delete content, you can access the store. But quite honestly, I almost never touch the store on the player itself. And I think the value of the player UI plus the web uh, capabilities and the mobile app come together to make it one of the strongest uh, AV platforms available to us in our systems. The mobile app is so well designed. All, you have all of your account management, all of your movie content store access, and even on a, a mobile app store, you can actually buy the content right in there. Uh, some other digital platforms like Amazon Kindle and, and such don't actually let you buy content in the mobile app because of the revenue shares and the things that happen with Apple and the platform holders, but K gives us the complete ability to buy content in the app. It's invaluable. You're, you're out with the family, out to dinner with some friends, you're coming back to your place, you wanna watch a movie, pick in what you want, maybe it's a new release, you need to buy it, go ahead, buy it outside your home in the app right there at dinner, kick off that download, and by the time you get home, of course, that movie will be sitting there, ready and waiting for your movie watching party. Of course, the web and the app both give you the ability to view your entire collection, as well as get all kinds of information, metadata, and whatnot about your content. I know it's definitely a daily stop for me to at least open the app or visit the webpage and take a look at what new stuff may have appeared in the store, take a look at what new sales, promotions, and stuff may have gone live. You can wish list content as well if it's something that you may want to buy later. It's where you view your digital offers if you have any upgrades or you did any disk to digital cataloging. And if a piece of content was upgraded in the store, maybe they fixed some bugs uh, in that piece of content or they improved uh, the video or audio quality, you need to kick off those update downloads through the app or the web experience as well. So it's an invaluable part of the platform. Make it part of your daily use of the platform. The other tip I want to give is, let's just say for sake of argument, if you have a home theater that's at a level of like say premium level that you're introducing a Kaleidoscape into it, I'm going to pretty much go out on a limb and say you may have some type of advanced automation system, Crestron, Savant, Control 4, or some other programmable capability to control your room. I use Control 4. And one of the virtues of the platform is I think Kaleidoscape is the most powerful video player when it comes to smart theater room and automation style integration. We can do a whole lot more than just have the lights turn off when we start the movie. 
and have the lights come back on when we stop the movie because they have a variety of triggers and engagements in the control drivers for these automation systems. One of the coolest things to take advantage of, and it's so simple, specifically in Control 4 in Home Composer, it's literally like one line of scripting because the trigger's there. Have your lights come on when you're watching a movie and it hits the end credits. K litters the content with all kinds of additional metadata to be able to inform the automation system and create these triggers. So it always amazes everybody uh, when they're over. We're watching a movie. Nobody touches a thing and the movie ends. We hit the credit sequence of the film and the lights come on and people can start cleaning up their spilled popcorn and, and all of those sorts of things. There's an incredible amount of automation control if you have a projection system and a scope screen and you don't have a video processor and you're trying to have, uh, you, or you're trying to use lens memories to adjust for 16 by nine versus 185 versus ultra widescreen content. Kaleidoscape can tell your automation system everything about essentially the movie that started playing, its aspect ratio and other details so you could trigger off of and key behavior changes and state changes in your system and your projector because of that. The other thing that I've done recently, I, I developed this kind of not com not super complex, but definitely a little bit involved macro to kind of replicate the Apple TV Siri, what did they say command, where we can have the Kaleidoscape skip back uh, with a little bit of assistance right now, at least to turn on a, a subtitle, replay a section where you may have missed a piece of dialogue with the subtitles on, and then we automatically turn the subtitles off at the end. Again, excellent automation control, lots of conditions, lots of power. And if you need some help with that, I do offer consulting sessions with regards to Control 4 specifically, or talk to your dealer, talk to your integrator, and make sure that they're harnessing the maximum power of the automation capabilities. Number four, I wanna talk about scenes. We use scenes quite a lot in our Kaleidoscape for, for quite a few different reasons. And one thing I also wanna kind of dis, uh, differentiate is the idea of scenes and scripts. So most movies in the store, you download them uh, to your system, you access them in the player UI, a scenes option will show up. And again, with all that metadata uh, tagging and such that Kaleidoscape does, they will have identified some very interesting parts of most films, giving you the ability to start a scene and jump right to that moment in the movie, uh, re-experience uh, an awesome, that, that awesome sequence or whatnot, and then jump you right back out after it's over. I use this all the time when I have people over to demo the theater. I keep a bunch of movies resident on my Terra server that are really there just for the demo scenes. I use it quite a lot when I'm, I'm tinkering around or tweaking some things in the room and I wanna play just a specific sequence of something to test something out, test out a video setting or test out an audio setting. And usually my kids are always asking as well, if, we're de if, if me and one or, or both of them are down in the room before my wife gets down there, we're waiting to start the actual movie that they're gonna watch. It's like, hey, we got a minute. Let, let's watch a cool scene from a movie that we like. Easy, just go right to it, pick it up, play it, and you're good to go. Now scripts let you stitch together a variety of these scenes so that they can play in sequence. And perhaps maybe if you're having a more dedicated like demo party, you could make some scripts to, to play start to finish through a variety of them. To be honest, I don't really use scripts that much. I use scenes a lot and all the time. We want more flexibility or freedom in choosing uh, which scenes we wanna play uh, in what order. I just had a couple guys over to the house uh, the other night from recording this video. And just playing one long script with a bunch of scenes, I don't think would have resonated as much as like playing one scene, talking about it, and then say, okay, you know, somebody pick, pick something based on the movies that are available pick a movie, pick a scene that you want to see to demo the room, and we'll do that one. So I usually prefer to do things that way, but scripts are there if you really want to make kind of that longer sequence of scenes. And if a movie is missing a scene that you particularly like, it wasn't in the preset metadata, the preset tags that Kaleidoscape did, you can make your own. So it's relatively simple within the UIs to, to tag the start of a sequence and the end of a sequence, make a scene, give it a name, and then the last tip that I wanna talk about is making sure that you're taking advantage of the disc to digital program. More than likely, if you're coming into Kaleidoscape as a new customer and you've been a physical media user, you've got a bunch of discs uh, sitting in your collection and they make it so easy and advantageous now to convert those discs into digital rights within the case store. All you need nowadays is a Blu-ray disc drive. This does work for HD discs only. 
uh, and, uh, and DVDs as well, but not 4K discs. So you get yourself a disc drive, a USB drive, you plug it in to the USB port on the back of the Strato. It'll put the Strato in a special cataloging mode and you can just basically feed your discs through. The Kaleidoscape will identify them. It'll auto eject the discs for you to put the next one in. And then if you go to your account in the, in the web UI or in the app, you will see a digital offer section and you may be able to buy those movies, yes, for as low as $4.92 in 4K, even with like the HD or even DVD level, standard definition level to 4K upgrade. The offers for all studios are not created equal and some are better in this program than others. This is an amazing aspect of the Kaleidoscape platform that's just been made better uh, within the last several months. I strongly recommend as well that you go through, take your physical media collection in one shot, just sit there and feed everything you have through the cataloging, the disc to digital program. That doesn't mean that you necessarily have to buy everything. And I also strongly recommend that you catalog discs for films that may not even be in the Kaleidoscape store yet. They will still take the registration of your disc ownership and keep it in a record in the digital offers. So later on, if you ever decide that you wanna go ahead and buy your offers or convert some films, you have them all in there ready to go. If a film that isn't in the store now comes to the store later, you've already had that ownership logged and ready in your account too. There is no reason not to just catalog the entirety of the discs that you have available to yourself so that they're in there ready to go and in the system. Doing disc to digital and cataloging used to be a big hassle. You had to get older Kaleidoscape hardware to do it. That was hard to find and expensive, but with the way the program works nowadays, it, it's, just, it's just awesome. I'll kind of do a bonus topic as well, particularly for the new users. You may have opted to start smaller in your storage. Maybe you have an eight terabyte tera, kind of the new entry point right now. Um, in my experience, everybody that comes into the platform Right, buying those storage sizes is inevitably going to fill them up. The one thing that I want to implore folks on though is don't feel that just because you filled up your storage that you're like under, uh, under some pressure or under some immediate need to run out and spend a lot more money buying more storage when a really great way to use the platform is just to cycle your content. I have a single 12 terabyte tera server here but I have something like 1,400 movies in my Kaleidoscape account. Way more movies than I can fit on there. But nowadays, especially if you're new into the platform and you've, you've, you're probably buying a brand new Terra Prime, we're downloading movies in eight minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, it's so fast, it's basically on demand. You don't have to have your entire movie catalog, your entire movie collection locally resident at all times. Of course, if that's the way you wanna use the platform, there are some virtues to doing so and you're gonna buy more storage to accomplish that. But cycling content is an excellent way to use the platform, uh, and that's how I use it. Again, those ultra-fast downloads, and even at eight terabytes, you're holding something like 130 movies, give or take. 22 terabytes lets you hold like literally hundreds of movies. So you have a lot of headroom to keep things there, but still opens open space and headroom to be able to cycle as well. Of course, if you wanna go buy more storage, feel free, and if you'd like to support Techthusiasm in the process, go buy it from my friends at Audio Advice with the links in the description below, or Ryan at Ascend AV. If you talk to any of those folks over the phone, mention that you learned about Kaleidoscape, you are a Techthusiasm uh, referral. Very much appreciated. Shares revenue to the channel. Doesn't cost you anything more. So there you go, a collection of tips to get started and get the most out of your entry into the Kaleidoscape platform. Again, I love this platform. I've been a customer, a user of Kaleidoscape for nigh on five years. I've had all the different permutations of the Strato and Terra hardware, and I really make it a goal and a point here on the channel to cover this platform as an owner and a user very thoroughly and completely. I really enjoy it. I want it to be successful, and I hope that if you've bought in that you're really enjoying the experience as well. Sound off in the comments below. If you have any tips for the kind of the new the new users and hey the existing ones as well for getting the most out of your Kaleidoscape, if you are a new user, sound off in the comments and let people know what are the things that you like most about the platform, how are you using it, 
what are you doing to take the most advantage of it? Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, leave those comments, let's discuss. If you'd like to support the channel, lots of ways to do that down below. Thanks so much for watching. Come on back for more home theater discussion and fun.